Hi, I'm Doug Black. I'm editor in chief of Inside HPC. And as part of our Hyperion research series of interviews, today we're talking with Irene Qualters. She is associate laboratory director for simulation and computation at Los Alamos National Labs. Uh, Irene, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Doug. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. So uh, I understand you run a rather sizable uh, organization within Los Alamos. If you could tell us um, uh, some of the project work that your group is doing and some of its more exciting potential implications. Uh, thanks, Doug. I've been involved in HPC for a very long time and I've watched its evolution um, in, in a variety of scientific disciplines. And uh, one of the things that is uh, particularly interesting and challenging for me is that uh, Los Alamos represents a very broad scientific and uh, HPC relevant uh, scope. And this ranges from uh, research that is entirely open We've been uh, quite active with, uh, within my group, within uh, collaborating groups across the laboratory, with academic scientists uh, worldwide, and with other laboratories uh, in pursuing, for example, uh, research associated with COVID. And that, uh, that covers areas such as uh, the genetic structure of the virus, how it effect, infects uh, and how contagious it is, as well as vaccine development. And that's just one area. We have also uh, groups that are working with uh, global climate simulation. Uh, our area of expertise particularly is associated with uh, sea ice and ocean modeling. And uh, again, as that, as we enter a no analog area in terms of where we as a planet have been before, uh, the implications not just on the geophysical phenomenon, but on the societies, on the securities as, uh, as changes happen um, with sea level, with the uh, biological um, makeup of the oceans. All of these are areas that we're um, interested in and involved in with others. Uh, we also uh, have a very significant uh, mission, which has to do with ensuring the safety and efficacy of the U.S. nuclear stockpile. And there too, the challenges for the future are taking us into a no analog space where materials under pressure and over time have to be understood and we need to do be able to do prediction. And in many cases, we do not have the experimental data to support the theory and the uh, computational models that we're using. So um, it matches well with uh, my background and, um, and, and my personal interests. Yeah, so as, as I understand it, Irene, you've, throughout your career, you've really worked, worked at the convergence of advanced technology uh, advanced computing and scientific discovery. Uh, in, in that context, uh, share with us your thoughts about where HPC is headed. Um, are there trends that, I'm sure there are trends that have you particularly excited, but also are there areas of concern? As we look at the evolution of AI, both bringing in what is being learned from the outside and bringing in our own bent on AI, such as physics-informed AI and trustworthy AI, I think there's enormous opportunity. 
So, you know, those are challenges I see, um, but I, I see a bright future. I don't know exactly what forms it will take, uh, but I'm, I'm not worried about it from the bigger picture. Uh, I, I, I'm confident that, uh, that as long as we stay um, both with one foot in what we need, what our communities need from us, as well as one foot in how technologies are evolving, I, I think things will go very well for us in the future. Okay, great. Um, uh, tell us uh, your thoughts on the biggest changes uh, HPC has helped bring about, you know, in your field, in your various uh, fields of research. So I do think the advance of modeling and simulation is uh, a phenomenal advance. And, uh, and so I, I think that that we should lay claim to that, and that's really important. And I don't see that going away. Uh, I, I see um, that the needs will continue to advance, particularly, uh, as I said, as we go into areas where instruments may not be capable of uh, giving us insight uh, into uh, atomic level phenomenon uh, in, the, in the physical sciences, for example. And, and we also hear about bringing AI into simulation. I mean, that sounds tremendously powerful. I, Irene, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with the HPC in the first place. So I was uh, really fortunate uh, to uh, leave graduate school at a time uh, that the supercomputing was really quite nascent. And uh, uh, I joined a, a very young startup company called Cray Research uh, at a time when it had less than 100 employees. And I was probably among the youngest. And, and that for an early career, and that's true today, uh, to be able to join uh, a group that has very senior, very experienced people in a in in a broad that have broad and deep knowledge. Uh, that's really a, a a career forming change because one can see how uh, mathematics influences physics, influences uh, computing, and so. Um, so that was really my start, and it really uh, gave me both the confidence and the experience to be able to engage um, others in other disciplines and uh, to be excited and stimulated and confident about doing that. Um, I'm sure that was a wonderful experience. The uh, and, and, and then. We how did your career evolve uh, from there so that you uh, got to Los Alamos? So I, there were probably two major steps in between. One was at Merck Research Labs. Um, and uh, it was also an interesting time because molecular dynamics uh, was uh, really evolving and maturing as well, frankly, as the er some of the early stages of AI that was, we were looking for signal detection in the uh, clinical trial data. Uh, so that was uh, really uh, also sh a shaping event. I did an, uh, a, 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 uh, a brief stint in a startup company that ended up being acquired by NVIDIA. And then uh, finally I spent, uh, over nine years at the National Science Foundation. Again, reinforcing that cross-disciplinary, that engaging with others uh, to, to really look at challenges that are kind of at the horizon level. Um, and so, and making sure that the role of computing continued to advance in a way that uh, could 
affect all of those disciplines. And that was a good fit for Los Alamos given the breadth of research, given their history with co-design, how theory, um, simulation, and experiment all interact with one another. So it, it really is a good match. Um, and I'm excited about the challenges that we're engaged in and how we're going about it, the scientific integrity used to go about pursuing the challenges. Okay, great stuff. Well, thanks so much, Irene. Thanks so much for joining us today. It was a, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Doug.